Well, good evening, friends, and Happy New Year. Pastor Charles here sharing with you for the next few evenings. This week, many churches around the world will celebrate Epiphany, marking the end of the season of Christmas, a time when the church marks both the birth and the early days, even years, of Jesus' life. Epiphany is a day when the church celebrates the visit of the Magi, or wise men from the East, within the first couple of years of Jesus' life. Now, why is this a significant day? This day represents Christ for the gospel to the Gentiles, and not just to Israel. The gospel for the world, for you and me. Now, it's not mandated that we use a church calendar and celebrate seasons like Advent, Christmas Tide, and days like Epiphany. But it is helpful because it gives us a longer period of intentional reflection on Christ, who has come for sinful and broken people, places, and things. So we continue this week talking about the incarnation of Jesus, who he is for us, and why it's important. Over these next few days, we will look at a passage in Matthew 2 about the visit of the wise men from the east. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been, bo- where is he who has been born king of-, king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child Mary with his mother, And they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. As I mentioned yesterday in my sermon, over the years and even this season, we've read or listened to pieces of the Christmas story over and over again. And one thing that strikes me is the multiple times we see the word behold. In the story, whether, as I said yesterday, it's in the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah, behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us, or when the angel comes to Mary or to Joseph or to the shepherds. And here in this passage, we see it twice. Now, when we see this word, it gets our attention, right? Behold, and that's the purpose. And in these stories, we have a sense that there are a lot of people that actually are amazed or captivated by Christ and his coming. So as I asked these questions yesterday, I want to repeat them for us for the next few days. And it begs these questions for us. What captivates you? What captivates me? It's often not Christ and his coming, is it? What is it that commands our attention? What is it that I must have? And if I don't get it or have it, I'm completely undone. A person? The approval of a certain person or group? Success? Is it a certain look or a body type? Is it a thing? Is it a particular situation or a dream? That if I'm realized that I'm incredibly unhappy, and so is everyone else around me. In our text this evening, we see the Magi are captivated by the coming of Christ. I read that these are religious experts. Magi probably referred to people whose practices included astrology, the study of scriptures, the pursuit of wisdom. They were seers and often magicians. 
they are religious men in the worldly sense. And they probably know the prophecies about the coming of Christ. And they are captivated by this star. And they have traveled a long way to see the child in a large caravan, maybe 15 to 20 miles per day for at least 800 miles. That would at least be 40 to 60 days. And then when they see him in the Bible, it says they give him gifts and they worship him. Now, we don't know if that means they worship him as Savior or not, but it does indicate that they know he is someone special for the world. And because of that, they do not go back and tell Herod his whereabouts. Another response here in our story, too, and that's the response of Herod who is threatened by the fact that this prophecy about the coming of Christ may be true. He is captivated by his own power and by the adulation of men. The fact that another ruler would command that attention undoes Herod. And we see after this passage that he acts completely irrationally when he realizes the wise men have not returned to him. And he commands and has all the male children in the region of Bethlehem, two years old and under killed. You think Herod's power was an idol to him? And when that idol is threatened, he acts like a lot of us do when our idols are threatened. Now, we're going to focus mainly over these next few days on the response of the wise men, captivated by Jesus, although we will touch on Herod's response briefly. Wise men from the east are following a star, which may be because they know the prophecy that a star will come from Jacob. That when they come searching, they refer to the words of Micah, and you, O Bethlehem, and the land of Judah are by no means among the least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. They are captivated that this star may lead to a new ruler and shepherd. And when they find him as a baby, rather than dismiss the prophecies, they are more captivated and they worship him. Because Christ has come as ruler and shepherd of his people, of us, we should be captivated by him. So tomorrow we're going to look at Christ coming as ruler. And then we'll look at him coming as shepherd. And we'll conclude later this week by talking about what all of this means for us. So let me pray for us. And then I will see you again tomorrow. Let's pray. God, we thank you for coming to be with us. And I pray that over the course of these next few days, you would truly captivate our hearts to help us to wonder, as the hymn says, at your love. Lord, teach us, we pray. Draw us closer to you. Thank you for your love. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, I hope you rest well. Have a good evening. And we will see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.